Welcome. In this session in linear data analysis, we'll explore what goes wrong during lectures. The, most of the lectures that I use uh, here on the light board go fairly well. What you're seeing is the final result of many, sometimes seemingly endless takes. When things go wrong for me, they usually go wrong in PowerPoint. These are often typos that I don't catch until I'm well into the PowerPoint slide. Sometimes this little clicker that I use runs low on batteries and it goes crazy. And then sometimes I fail to take into account the other workers in our building. And one of the first things we do is we create a zero mean matrix. So now these are all still real numbers. And now each one of these columns, if we add the numbers up, they'll come to zero. The scatter matrix is related to this zero mean matrix. And here, we've taken the transpose in the wrong order. We'll look at the scores of original data, and we'll explore PCA as an optimization problem. So the first thing we'll look at, hmm, I don't like this. The main concepts for this lecture are we'll explore the scores of the original data as in PCA, and we'll explore how So the main concepts for this lecture are, we'll revisit briefly scores of our original data. No, we won't. We're not going to do that at all. And this cell has, uh, these are tree-like structures. And drawing from the Greek word, these are called dendrites. And electrically, these act as inputs. So at the tips of these, in a typical model, um, are synapses. And these, when the um, electrical uh, packets cross now. So let's make some observations about observations. And let's recall the right transpose of a matrix. For mathematics, this is fine. For data, it's a useful fiction that we'll employ. And that is, we could take a data matrix and then we could multiply it by its transpose. And if we do that, the entry ij will be another small error. Normally in linear algebra, what we see is a decomposition, which is a product. And here we have a series, which is quite unusual. And this is sometimes referred to as the Eckhart-Young series, or the Eckhart-Young approximation, or the Eckhart-Young theorem. So for a zero mean matrix, which is what we usually have, um, this, uh, by the way, is uh, completely incorrect. So the idea behind this is, if you're given a partition, what you can do is you can calculate what's called the centroid or center of mass. In our terms, that's simply a mean. And this mean is, you find the mean of the observations, and then what you have to do is transpose it, and that's not happening here. So what I did was I implemented the logistic activation function using the squared error measure and a, a numerical solver that I wrote. And what I found was that this is the separation. Now, let's be clear here. What I'm doing is I am showing the use and so what's happening is this is when we plot the logistic scores, here uh, we're giving the scores that uh, have a label of zero, we're putting those as a zero vertical value, and here we have uh, data that have a, a label of one, and we're giving them a one vertical. This is what the logistic function is doing. And when I plot, sorry, this is what logistic regression is doing. Do we need to redo this? Probably. Welcome. In this session in linear data analysis, we'll explore the curse of dimensionality by supposing that our data are normally or Gaussian distribution. Let's redo that. And our requirement is that um, entry of the adjacency matrix is one if and only if it means that that pair of vertices are an edge. And the, let's recall that that. <clears throat> 
This doesn't work. And we know that by, by the way that we've constructed the um, Laplacian matrix, we know that if we multiply it by the ones vector, we get the zero vector. And that means that because of this ordering, that the smallest eigenvalue is zero. And that means that this equation is very slightly wrong. U j will be between minus 1 and 1. And th so we can use this rescaling to find a, um, a variate. So what we'll, ref what we'll do is we'll think of this as a variate. So u sub j is now between minus 1 and 1. And this will allow us to explore uniformly distributed data in a hypercube. Because if we perform this for, oh no, there we go. So, how do I compensate for these problems? Well, there are five words that I try to live my life by, and they are show up, do your best. I just keep showing up to these lectures, and I keep doing my best, and sometimes my best isn't particularly good, but somehow I make it through. So I hope that these lectures have proven a little bit entertaining, but mainly I hope that they've really helped you to understand a little more about linear data analysis.